Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What I want to do is kind of process that measurement activity that we did together. Um, first we looked at um, this interesting kind of four-sided ruler. We were looking at measuring the length of an unsharpened pencil. All right. Now this ruler, as you can tell, is not super accurate because there's no sort of divisions or uh, graduations on it. Um, and so we just sort of know where the beginning is and we know where the end is. All right. Uh, so we kind of zoomed in and, set, and put our ruler on there and asked you to estimate the, um, the length of our pencil using this very inaccurate ruler. All right. Um, the one meter mark is about halfway down. And so a lot of people would measure this around 0 0.2. Now, why don't we go out to more decimal places? Well, it has to do with what we know and what we don't know. So in a measurement, there's always uh, values that you know, and then there we estimate to one decimal place uh, about what we don't know. It's our estimate or it's our guess. So as I look at this, I measure this around 0 0.2 meters. However, uh, one of your classmates might measure this as 0 0.3, for instance. If you said 0 0.1 or 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, I might question that. Um, but uh, I think that's a pretty good guess. So in a measurement, we always, there are numbers that we know, and then we estimate to one place beyond what we know. All right. So in terms of what we know, we know that our pencil here is, is more than zero meters long, but it's less than one. So that's how we know uh, that, first, um, that first zero value. Looking at the uh, decimeter side of our ruler, um, what we know here is that, uh, that our pencil is more than one decimeter and less than two. So I would measure this around 1.9. So we know that it's more than one but less than two. And then what we do is we make a guess or we make an estimate about how far down it is. And so if somebody said, I think it's around 1.8, I would say okay with that. Um, so that last digit again is the estimated value. Another way of thinking about this is that um, what we know, the smallest sort of decimal place or place value that we know is what it's calibrated in. So um, as we see in the orange and the white there, um, each of those lines uh, is worth one decimeter. Looking at our centimeter ruler, um, this one gets a little bit trickier because our pencil comes out really close to 19. Uh, centimeters. So how do we say it? How do we record it? Is it 19? Is it 19.0? Well, it turns out we would want to uh, we'd want to estimate it at 19.0 if we think that it's exactly on the 19. So uh, again, one way of thinking about it is that um, the last place that that we know is the ones place, and the centimeter ruler is calibrated. Uh, in the um, in the ones, meaning that every line on there is worth one centimeter. All right. Um, so our estimate is actually that uh, if it's on the line, we add the we add the zero after it. So that's why we say 19.0. Another way of thinking about it: what if you what if you or a classmate thought that it was a little bit short of 19 when you measured it? Well, I would say then it'd be 18.9. So. Uh, again, what we know is, is that one's place and our estimate is to the tenths place. All right, that's our guess. Looking at the millimeter side of the ruler, we're getting more and more accurate as we go along. Um, and, uh, uh, and so what we know is that uh, we know down to the one millimeter place. In other words, each of those lines is worth one millimeter. And so then we estimate uh, one place beyond that. Now, if you thought that it was exactly on the, ninth, uh, on the uh, 190 millimeters, you would say 190.0. And both of those numbers would be, would be totally acceptable. All right. Let's take a look at our balances here. So we have our electronic balance measuring the same, the same thing. Uh, and we notice that our balances are giving us different numbers and different degrees of accuracy um, in their decimal places. So what's going on? How are we having different numbers? Uh, they're all measuring the same thing. So uh, if we compare, for instance, the first, the first, uh, the first one on the left, and then the one in the middle. Um, well, if we took our value of 17.14, uh, 
and we were going to round it to the ones place, um, we would keep it at a one because of the four that, I'm, that we're pointing to with the arrow. So what's the first bounce on the left doing? It's rounding the mass, all right? If we kind of compare the middle and then the right balance, if we were going to round to the tenths place, or excuse me, the hundredths place, um, that second four would not round up. So we would be at 17.14, which is what we see in the middle balance. So our balances have, are showing a different degree of accuracy um, in their measurements. All right. And what are they doing? How are they arriving at that number? They're actually rounding according to whatever the, the display will allow. In the beaker in the graduated cylinder, if we were to try to measure out 50 milliliters of water in a graduated cylinder, uh, we would not be super accurate um, or precise when we were doing that because, the, uh, because of the devices really used for sort of holding an approximate amount. However, a graduated cylinder is more accurate. And so how do we know it's more accurate? Well, it's got more lines. It's got more graduations in it. And that tells us it's more accurate in the same way that our millimeter ruler was, was way more accurate than the decimeter or the centimeter ruler. Last one, how do, how do we record this measurement in the burette? Well, what you want to notice is that the numbers are going down. So we have 8, we have 9, and 10 as we go from top to bottom. So that's sort of the direction that we're going to be reading it. And then what we want to be able to look at is uh, how much are each of these graduations worth. And uh, since we're on the metric system, this is uh, sort of works in the same way. Um, we have 10 graduations or divisions uh, between each of the numbers. So that means that each line is worth a tenth of a milliliter. And that's the last value that we know. And since we're, it's calibrated to the, to, the, to the tenths place, we estimate to the hundredths. So I would, I would estimate this to be about 8.10. Again, we're calibrated to the tenths place, so we estimate to the hundredths. So just to recap uh, this activity and, and why we are going to be talking about significant figures, uh, different me uh, measuring devices have different degrees of accuracy. Um, we see that in uh, the meter sticks. Um, we see that in our balance. And so when we look at numbers, uh, the numbers indicate to a scientist the degree of accuracy of our measuring device. So what we're going to ask you to do now is look at some rules for significant figures. And so even though in math class when we look at these numbers of 100, according to in math class these numbers are all the same and according to your calculator they're the same. However, in science class these numbers are actually different. They're different because they indicate uh, the degree of accuracy of the measuring device where we got that information from. All right. Thanks for watching.